And here she's somebody who's against corporatocracy in the American empire, and she's supporting Obama, who, who hands out bailouts like crazy, and who, if you ask him, well, you're going to bring the troops home from all these various countries, he says, we can't retreat into isolationism. So he's got the robot propaganda PC term down absolutely pat when anybody ever asks him a question like that. So my good friend Anthony Gregory, who in one of the best essays I've read in a long time, said this about Obama. So now we, we actually come down to earth. Obama shoveled money toward corporate America, banks, and car manufacturers. He championed the bailouts of the same Wall Street firms his very partisans blamed for the financial collapse. He picked the CEO of General Electric to oversee the unemployment problem. He appointed corporate state regulars for every major role in financial central planning. After guaranteeing a new era of transparency, he conducted all his regulatory business behind a shroud of unprecedented secrecy. He planned his health care scheme, the crown jewel of his domestic agenda, in league with the pharmaceutical and insurance industries. Now, as for foreign policy, again, my critic seems to think that Obama is some kind of opponent of the, of the American empire. But the American empire is the result of a thoroughly bipartisan foreign policy that's gone on for over half a century. Uh, Andrew Bacevich, who's sort of a conservative foreign policy analyst, had a good book last year called Washington Rules. And he uses this term, Washington Rules. It's a, I think it's a uh, maybe more elegant term. I, I, I always refer to the bipartisan foreign policy consensus. But what he's basically showing is that the foreign policy difference between Hillary Clinton and John McCain is basically cosmetic. I mean, there's not, no re the fundamental assumptions behind it are really shared by, by both these people, and they're shared by the New York Times, the Washington Post, and pretty much all the major US newspapers. Uh, now again, Anthony Gregory, he says, Obama continued the war in Iraq, even extending Bush's schedule with a goal of staying longer than the last administration planned. And then finally the Iraqis said, you've got to get out. He tripled the US presence in Afghanistan, then took over two years to announce the eventual drawdown to bring it back to only double the Bush presence. He widened the war in Pakistan, launching drone attacks at a dizzying pace. He started a war on false pretenses with Libya, shifting the goalposts and doing it all without congressional approval. He bombed Yemen and lied about it. He enthusiastically signed on to warrantless wiretapping, renditioning, the Patriot Act, prison abuse, detention without trial, violations of habeas corpus, and invasive airport security measures. He deported immigrants more than Bush did. He increased funding for the drug war in Mexico. He invoked the Espionage Act more than all previous co presidents combined, tortured a whistleblower, and claimed the right to unilaterally kill any US citizen on Earth without even a nod from Congress or a shrug from the courts. Hmm. But this is the opponent of corporatocracy and American empire. The, never underestimate the ability of politics and government to confuse people. That's what they're there for, is to fill our heads with this idea that they're the great saviors, or there's at least one party among them that's the great saviors. And without them, oh, it would all be terrible. We'd all have jobs earning us three cents an hour. We'd all be dead, just what you read in your seventh grade textbook. 